Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at identities with sec, cosec and cot, so we can answer questions from exercise 6D. What I want to start on first though is some of these questions where we have to find the exact value of uh, a trigonometric expression given another trigonometric um, expression and its value. So in this case here we've got tan A is equal to minus 5 over 12. Don't worry too much about the negative symbol for now. We're we'll going to mostly look at the 5 over 12 value. Um, and we're given that the angle A is obtuse. Find the exact value of sec A. Well, let's go back to basic um, right angle trigonometry here and draw us out a right angle triangle. And um, in this triangle, the ratio is going to be formed by calculating the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So let's draw this out on a triangle. We have 5 on the opposite side here and 12 along the base on the adjacent side there. That means if we use Pythagoras' theorem, we get 13 on that side there. So now what do we have to do? We're looking to find sec A. So I think the best place to start here would be to work out cos A first, maybe. So cos theta is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse side. Looking at our triangle down here, we've got... Um, 12 over 13, so cos a, um, cos theta is equal to 12 over 13, <clears throat> and now we're going to have a look at whether it is a negative or positive negative, uh, whether it's a negative or positive 12 over 13. The cos graph for when the angle is obtuse is in between this region here, so it's going to be in the negative part of the graph. So in this case here, cos theta is actually going to equal minus 12 over 13, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for sec A. So in this case here, sec theta is going to equal minus 13 over 12, and that's our final answer, minus 13 over 12. In the same question here, we'll now find the exact value of cosec. So this time here, we're looking for sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. And this time, if we look at our triangle down in the bottom left, we've got 5 over 13. So 5 over 13 will go in there. And in this time here, we're told that A is obtuse. So let's draw the sine graph and have a look at positive or negativeness for when it's obtuse. In this case here, it's on the positive side of the graph. So in this case here, sine is going to stay positive. So it's going to stay sine theta equals 5 over 13. So therefore, cosec is equal to 13 over 5. Okay, so there we are. That's how you answer these types of questions here. Just ignore the negative um, part of the question for now. Concentrate on the 5 over 12. Form yourself a Pythagoras triangle. Have a look at the actual um, trigonometric expression you want. Work out whether it's going to be negative or positive using the graph for that region of the graph. If it said in this question here the angle was reflex, then I would have to make it negative because between 180 and 360, it is on the negative side of the graph. Right, let's get into um, the main bit of this video then, the trigonometric identities. Now, very similar to sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, we, get, we have these expressions that link tan and sec together and cot and cosec together. And these formulas come straight from sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Let's take sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 and try and derive the first one here. Now in order to make tan squared, we would like sine squared to be divided by cos squared. So throughout the whole of this equation, I'm going to divide by cos squared. On the left hand side I get sine squared over cos squared plus cos squared over cos squared equals 1 over cos squared. Simplify the left hand side, cos squared over cos squared will equal 1 and we know that 1 over cos is sec. So tan squared plus 1 is equal to sec squared. Okay. So in actual fact, with this formula here, with this identity here, I don't actually remember it. I remember that you start with sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, you divide by cos squared if you want the tan, and then you create it yourself uh, when you're in an exam. Okay, so no, no necessity to remember this. It's not in the formula booklet, so you won't be able to recall it from there, but you can recall it from the fact that you know that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. And we could do the same thing with the bottom one as well. To make the cot, this time it's cos over sine. So I'm going to divide through by sine squared this time. 
So I get sine squared over sine squared plus cos squared over sine squared equals 1 over sine squared. <clears throat> and in this case here, sine squared over sine squared is 1, cos squared over sine squared is cot squared, and 1 over sine squared is cosec squared. So once again, I don't really remember this formula here. I remember that you take sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 and divide through by sine squared, and you can create the formula yourself. Okay, so using these two expressions here, what we're going to do is have a look at simplifying or proving that this thing here is equal to this thing here. What I would probably do then is start with the left-hand side, so LHS is equal to uh, this expression here on the left-hand side. Now, it looks like it might be the difference of two squares, but not quite the difference of two squares, difference of two um, quartic powers here. So effectively we've got um, factorised into double brackets, so what it's going to look like is this thing here. It's going to look like cos squared plus cot squared and cos squared minus cot squared. Now in this case here what we can do is we can replace on the right hand bracket with um, cosec squared with 1 plus cot squared and you'll see there that um, 1 plus uh, cot squared minus cot squared will cancel out and just make you 1. So the second bracket is going to equal 1 here. Now we just need to simplify this thing here. Cos squared um, plus cot squared. Now they both have sine squared on the bottom, so let's turn them now from cosec and cot into sine over cos and 1 over sine. So in this case here, it rewrites them as their sine and cosine equivalents. So 1 over sine squared plus cos squared over sine squared. Luckily, we've got common denominators here, so we can add the fractions together. And we've basically got the same thing as we have on the right-hand side now. We just need to replace sine squared with 1 minus cos squared. So replacing sine squared with 1 minus cos squared that you learnt in year 12 and we get this expression here, which is equal to the right-hand side, and we've proved it, so little square. Okay, good. So in this proof here, we started off by doing a little bit of factorising, spotted that one of the brackets could simplify down to 1, so that was great, that cancelled out a lot of the hard work for us. And then as early as possible, what I would recommend you do is turn any tans, cosecs, secs, cots, into both sines and coses. It's much easier if you just work with the whole proof um, just in terms of sines and coses, which we did in this step here. And given that the answer was completely in terms of coses, that kind of makes sense as well. So as early on as possible, turn whatever your trigonometric expression is into purely sines and coses, and that will give you a great hand. Let's have a go at the next question then. In this case here we want to prove that sec squared minus cos squared is identical to sine squared theta brackets 1 plus sec squared theta. So in this case here, always start with the more difficult side. I reckon the right hand side is more difficult in this question here. So let's start out by writing out right hand side equals. So right hand side equals. Uh, let's probably expand the brackets first. And then sec squared, well, I can probably write that as um, cos squared. So I think that's what I'll probably do. Replace sec squared with cos squared. And then rewrite the second term. So this is going to be sine squared over cos squared. Uh, replace the fraction. So sine squared over cos squared is tan squared now. So we can replace that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the 1 minus cos squared and um, the tan equivalent one to replace tan with sec. So in this case here, if you remember, rewriting both of these equations, we get <clears throat> 1 minus cos squared theta for sine squared here. And then tan squared, if you remember, is um, equal to sec squared theta minus 1. Let's just prove that. We start with sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, because we don't need to remember it. We can always show it and derive it just quickly on the side of a page. So um, in this case here, we're going to get this. So in this case here, the identity is tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. So you can see here that tan squared 
tan squared theta can be replaced with sec squared theta minus 1. Okay, so you don't need to remember that this is the case. You can always prove it from first principles. So, so there we are. That's how you get the sec squared minus 1. And now combining both of these terms together here, uh, cancelling out the ones and rearranging the order, we get sec squared theta minus cos squared theta. So there we are. That is the answer to the left-hand side, and because we've finished this proof, we get to put a little square. Okay, so it happened pretty early on. Expanding the brackets was, yeah, that's fine, but in the, in the second line from here to here, second to third line, we simplified the whole question into just sines and coses, which made the question a lot easier. Okay, so that box said that it, uh, it takes a little while to get used to, but the more you do, the better you're going to become. We're now going to have a look at solving an equation here using one of the identities to help us solve it. So we've got 4 cosec squared minus 9 equals cot theta in the interval from 0 to 360. A general strategy is to replace terms until they are the same type, cos, cot, etc. And it's always a good idea to replace the squared term because there are a bunch of identities that link squared terms with other squared terms rather than single terms with other single terms. So starting off here by replacing cosec squared and the identity for cosec squared is 1 plus cot squared. Expand your brackets with the 4 there so we get 4 plus 4 cot squared theta minus 9 equals cot theta, and now we've got an expression in terms of just cots, which is a lot easier. Get everything onto one side, and now you've effectively got a quadratic. Factorise that quadratic if you can, put it into the polynomial solver if you can't. And remember that cot can equal any value, so it's not going to be the case that if we get cot equals 2, we get no solutions. Cot and tan always have solutions. So cot theta equals 5 over 4, or cot theta equals minus 1. Let's turn these equations into tan equations so we can inverse them on our calculator. So tan theta equals 45, sorry, 4 over 5 and tan theta equals minus 1. And then use your calculator and the additional subtraction of 180 to get your next answers. So in this case here it's going to be 38.7. Add on 180 and we get the next one, 219. All to three significant figures you'll see here. And then for minus one, 135, and the next one along, add 180 upwards, we get 315. So there we are, that's how we answer a um, trigonometric uh, quadratic equation where we have to replace a cosec squared with a cot squared, but remember it's one plus cot squared is the identity. Right then, let's uh, have a go at these two questions on our own then. So pause the video and try these ones out. Right, okay then, let's have a go at um, this first one here then. So we'll start with the left-hand side. This one looks like it's the more difficult. So left-hand side equals um, sec squared uh, cot squared minus cos, minus cos squared equals cot squared. So... Um, let's have a go at expanding the brackets here. So in this case here we're going to get um, we're going to get sec squared a cot squared a minus sec squared a cos squared a. <clears throat> okay, let's now write um, all of these in terms of sine and cos. So sec is going to be one over cos squared. Oops, it's an A. Uh, cot squared is going to be um, cos squared over sine squared. So we'll see two things cancelling out there. Uh, the second one is going to be 1 over cos squared. And times that by cos squared. So we can see here in both of these um, left-hand side and right-hand side expressions that we've got stuff cancelling out. We've got 1 over sine squared and on the second one here we've got 1. So let's turn 1 over sine squared back into cosec squared. And all of a sudden now we've now got the identity for cot squared, so turn this here back into cot squared. 
And there we are, that's the final answer uh, for this question here then. So this thing equals right hand side, and now that we've proved that left hand side equals right hand side, put a little box down the bottom there. Okay, that's the answer to question 6C then. Let's have a go at now solving, um, solve in the given interval uh, minus pi to pi this equation here. So first things first, we've got a quadratic equation here. We've got two different trig functions. And what we're going to do here is we're going to turn the quadratic one into the linear one. So if we can remember what one, uh, what tan squared is equal to, um, I'm pretty sure this is equal to sex squared minus one. So sec squared theta minus two sec theta plus one equals zero. So cancel out the ones and factorize one of the secs. So sec theta brackets sec theta minus two equals zero. So therefore either sec theta equals zero, in which case, um, Hold on, that cannot happen because that's 1 over cos uh, equals 0. So no solutions here. And on the second one here, sec theta is going to equal 2. So therefore that would mean 1 over cos equals 2. So therefore cos is equal to a half. And in this case here, we're going to have solutions of pi by 3 and minus pi by 3. In between pi to minus pi. So there we are. That's how we answer these types of questions here then. So this is a really tricky exercise. I would really advise you to answer the majority of the questions in this exercise here, particularly every question with a P or an E next to it, problem solving or exam type question. All right then, uh, persevere through the difficult ones. Please do go and ask your teacher if you need any help with any of them. And thanks for watching.